I applied um, not really expecting anything, honestly. I knew a lot of bands were applying for this, so I was just like, okay, well, you know. Actually, I forgot about even applying to the contest. And then I came home one uh, afternoon, uh, coming from, I was coming home from work, and I opened up my email. I was actually on the phone with my friend's mom. Uh, and we were just talking about something and I saw the email, so I just dropped the phone on her. <laughs> I, I was just excited, right? We got selected for this thing, and now we're getting sent somewhere and we have no idea where we're getting yeah. sent. We're all confused, we're sitting down, and then he's like, congratulations. I was dying, like, uh, you know, now now I believe it's true and I'm like, I gotta tell somebody. <laughs> it was like, it was for me it was crazy. It was like a weird situation because I heard and then I was like, oh, that's a big deal. What's the catch? What's the catch? What's the catch? The whole time it's just been like surprise after surprise. My friend texted me to tell me that her mom, like, like saved a copy of us because we made like, you know, the, the Arts and Life uh, front page and I was like, for what? You know, it was like, yeah, the rubber tracks. It was like, whoa. When you make a list of cities that are a hotbed for hip hop talent, Winnipeg, Canada probably doesn't come to mind. Despite their unassuming roots, hip hop group The Lytic were one of 84 bands selected to spend two days recording new music in Brooklyn, New York, as part of Rubber Tracks, Converse's ongoing initiative supporting emerging artists by providing free recording sessions with no strings attached. WRG sat down with the group as well as surprise guest mentor Mike D of the Beastie Boys to talk about their experience in studio and to explore the creative process. It's been overwhelming this week as we've in these last couple weeks as we've seen these 84 bands go all over the world to go to these amazing studios and meet some amazing people that never before has that come to life in such a heightened way that conviction of unleashing their creative spirit than these couple of weeks. Like you know when you hear of like cool stories that happen to people? Um, like one out of whatever, a thousand, a million, you know those you know, rare occasions or situations? I just didn't, I never thought of ourselves or myself being in a situation like that. Part of me was like, holy crap, like this is huge, this is massive. And there was a part of me that was like, but yeah, yeah, right? Because we we should be here, right? You know what I mean? There were 9,000 people that wanted this, you know, and you get to do it. And then on top of it, not only do you get to do it, but they sit you down with one of the homies that puts you on. Like, like, like when I say put you on, I mean like put you on to things. Just, you never met him, you don't know him, but he's got a huge impact. And now you get to meet him? Do you, yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, that work with him, that's even better. It's an honor, it's an honor, it's an honor just like being around him and having the opportunity to collaborate on a project with him. I think six years ago, he would have walked into the studio and been like, what the hell? And walked out. <laughs> I don't think he would have, I don't think, I don't think he would have, you know, now we're at a point where we, we can be worked with and we can be kind of talked to and, um, you know, we can bounce ideas off other people. Well, it was different because none of us, we all had nothing. We were just live like Rick was going to NYU and we are still in high school. So we would go to his dorm room and just post up and just like, but he had equipment, like he had drum machines and PA and turntables. So he was definitely further along and he, def you know, he had also a vision for what our sound, we had a vision for what our sound could be and he had a vision for what our sound could be. And so it was a thing of like those things coming together and having a place where that, um, that could happen. I think there's a lot more, um, I think awareness, like a, like a lot more self-awareness, you know? I think there was, a, there was a legit time when it was like, I think our last record, I honestly just felt like no one was listening. It's not easy being an emerging artist and that this would really be a valuable, valuable experience for, for the artist. Whenever you're, you're making something, you're trying to cook something up, everybody has an opinion, everybody has some salt. Some opinions are good, some opinions are bad, but if you take too many opinions into the recipe, your food just tastes salty. You get to that thing of like not knowing if something's good or not good and you're like, okay, I gotta just move on and get away from it for a minute. We were kids just making music.